what you're looking at here is a typical wiring diagram of central heating and air conditioning systems. So this applies to furnaces, air handlers, and so on. So as you can see, I have everything off right now. I have the breakers off, the switch is off, the disconnect is off, and the thermostat is off. So this is an animated diagram. As I go through turning things on one by one, we will see the electricity flowing through the wires and I will walk you guys through it step by step explaining how this whole thing works. So let's begin with the breaker on the condensing unit. This is going to be a 240 volt breaker. It's going to be a two pole. It could be anywhere from 20 to 50 plus amps, depending on the size of the unit. So let's go ahead and turn that on. Now, as you can see, we have 120 volts on each one of these legs here for a total of 240 volts up to the disconnect. So now let's go ahead and turn the disconnect on. And as you can see, the 240 volts travels on to the contactor located inside the condensing unit. Now, the 240 volts we're sending here is the power we're going to need later on to turn on our compressor and our condenser or fan motor but the contactor is not pulled in yet because we need a 24 volt signal from the control wiring the low voltage control wiring which is a signal that's going to come from the thermostat and we're going to about to get into that in just a few minutes but for now the contactor is off the 240 volts is sitting there waiting to do its thing and we're going to move on to turning on the breaker for our furnace or our air handler now, if you have a furnace, this is going to probably be a 120 volt single pole breaker, probably 15 amps, possibly 20. Um, for air handlers, it could be a 120, but most likely these days it's going to be a 240 volt two pole breaker. But either way, let's go ahead and turn that on. Now you can see we now have power up to our furnace or our air handler switch. So let's go ahead and turn that on as well. And we can see now that we are getting power going right to the control board inside the furnace or the air handler. Now a control board sends this power directly to a transformer. It's a step-down transformer. It takes the 120 or 240 volts and it steps it down to 24 volts. Now this is the 24 volts that we are going to use in our control system. So whenever you're testing for low voltage, be it at the air handler, at the thermostat, at the condensing unit outside, whenever you're testing low voltage it is coming from this one place right here this is the origin of all that power throughout the entire system now our transformer is going to send a 24 volts out it's going to go through a 3 or a 5 amp fuse and after that it's going to go directly to the R terminal on our control board in the air handler or the furnace now if you have a furnace there might be uh, one or two things in that circuit between the transformer and the R terminal um, you might find a high limit switch in that circuit or possibly a flame rollout and all purpose of that is if the furnace were ever to overheat or the flame were rolling out of the furnace um, it can open up that circuit and kill power to that R terminal which completely disables the entire low voltage control system and everything shuts down. The common terminal on our control board brings it back to the transformer which completes the circuit. Now I tried to stick to conventional wiring here, color codes uh, throughout all of this. You will see variations out there, but the important thing is that you study exactly how it works here. So regardless of the color of the wire, it's still going to work exactly the same way as you see it here. Now conventional wiring, color codes, we will have a red wire going from the R terminal on our control board to the R terminal up to the thermostat. Now the thermostat is the brains. It is the control of everything in the system. It decides what turns on, what turns off, and when. So this 24 volts that we're sending up to the thermostat, the thermostat has the ability to split that 24 volts up and send multiple signals out to turn things on and off. But right now, our thermostat is in the off mode, and our 24 volts stops right here. So what I'm going to do now before we start getting into the modes is I'm going to leave the thermostat off. I'm going to take the fan setting from auto to on. And basically what this is, uh, when the fan setting is in the auto position, the fan is basically in standby mode and will come on whenever there is a call for heating or cooling. But when you turn the fan setting to from auto to on, what happens is, is the blower motor in the air handler will come on and run continuously. And this is a setting that is used just to circulate air in the house. So rather than your blower motor just coming on 
when there's a call for heating and cooling, it'll run continuously regardless of what mode the thermostat is calling for. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And now we see that the thermostat powered up the G terminal. So this G terminal from the thermostat sends the 24 volts back to the G terminal on the control board. And what happens now is that a relay on the control board will take the high voltage coming in from the switch and send that voltage to the blower motor so that it can then begin to run. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put our fan setting back into the auto position. This puts the blower motor into standby mode waiting for heating or cooling to activate. So now I'm gonna take the thermostat and let's try cooling mode first. We'll turn the thermostat to cooling mode. And as you can see, we now have our thermostat sending two signals out. We have the thermostat sending a signal out on the G terminal in order to turn on our blower. So that's half of our air conditioning system. We need the air handler to come on. The other half of the air conditioning system is condensing unit. So the thermostat is going to send a signal out on the Y terminal and that Y terminal is for cooling. So you can see the 24 volts being sent out by our thermostat on the Y terminal lands on the Y terminal on the control board. Now some air handlers may not actually have a more modern control board. They'll have what's called a fan relay board. And these fan relay boards, they don't actually have a Y terminal on them. Um, so basically the idea here is to get 24 volts from the Y terminal on the thermostat out to the contactor in the condensing unit. Um, the Y terminal on the control board, you can kind of think of it as just a junction spot to deliver that purpose. So if we get 24 volts on that Y terminal, you will often see another wire connected to that same terminal, which will be the 24 volts we need to pull in the contactor outside. But on a fan relay board, you may see that yellow wire coming from the thermostat's Y terminal being tied directly to the wire that goes outside and it never touches the board at all. But either way, the whole goal here is to get that contactor closed so that we can turn on the second half of our air conditioning system, which is the compressor and the condenser fan motor. So now that our contact is energized we have a 24 volt circuit running through there 24 volts from the Y terminal to the contactor out of the contactor back to common on the control board in the air handler and back to the transformer to complete the circuit the contactor will pull in and that will allow the 240 volts to now continue on and power up our compressor and our condenser fan. And that is cooling mode completed. That is everything in operation.